That is some phenomenal music. It really doesn't get any better than that. But uh, This side objects, yeah. but we'll, well continue. Well, that's okay. Keep going one direction. You're doing great. Go one Welcome direction Welcome to out of here. the second episode of the Pass Rugby News. I'm here along with my co-host Raquel McLeod, and I'm Vince McLeod. Now, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter, both under the names at Pass Rugby News. Don't forget. And please subscribe to our podcast under The Pass Rugby News. Don't forget to subscribe. Ask your friends. Make everyone love it. Real easy. Go to the iTunes store. Search it. Subscribe. Download. We need you. You need us. It works out perfect. So let's get into our stuff this week. we got a pretty big review we got to do and some previews moving forward. But I think the first crazy news that came out of nowhere, searching on BBC, is this Belgian club, Royal Couturel RFC, beat their opponent, RC Soignies. I don't speak Belgian or French, so I'm not even close. But they beat them 356 to 3. Ridiculous. Yeah. So, quick synopsis. Apparently, the ref didn't show up on time. Soignies, half the team left. But in order for them to actually get a losing point and not minus one point, they had to still play the match. Right, but what's ridiculous is that the ref is yeah. late. Well, and but the, everything the, the, doesn't revolve around the ref. If he's late, he's late. There everyone should be knows policy. in Europe things are slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, they yeah. should have policy that I, if the ref is late, it is I not agree. on the home team. What and I just, how long do you wait? How long did they yeah. wait? We really don't know those details. Well, what I don't understand is the report claimed, too, that Soignis had 16 guys. So that means nine of your guys are fat asses that can't do any Which running. Which is probably why they stay there just to drink. But here's the, here's the even more perplexing thing about this. Soignis is actually still up one point in the table over Royal Couture. Which is why they stuck it out. <laughs> they knew they needed that one measly point. So, but at the yeah. cost... They have the worst publicity ever to get their ass served. Yeah. And if you watch their highlights and recaps of what they're showing, they're just standing there. Why don't they just pat them on the back as they're running by them? Yeah, so hats off to you, Royal Couturo. Good job, Belgian. Uh, yeah, I think that was just amazing news. I hope and, it works out for you. Yeah, good luck on that one. But back to what is important. The good stuff here. So let's move on to Six Nations. The one thing that everyone's been looking forward to and... I think we should just go off the bat and start with England Wales. And what do you think of that techno concert beforehand, though? Well, I think oh. they're trying to do <laughs> as we do in America. Uh, we spice it up, yeah. and I do love it. I, I mean, it's phenomenal. I think that's what sells. I I've think been they to know a it. Kiss concert, and I kind of felt like that initially. Uh, love the pyrotechnics, though. I mean, I want to know how you've been to a Kiss concert, honey, but you yeah, listen to 1D. I, I don't know. Okay, well, side note, sidebar. Same. Sorry. It's okay. Back to this pyro and this great show. I, I was mean, impressed with Rob Shaw, though, holding Defiant in the tunnel. I and agree. If I you agree. didn't see that. I mean, Big Sam tried to throw some law down, but I guess it didn't work out for him. Yeah, that much. well, I don't know. Just letting the reserves come out first, and I think you should walk out together right after. But I got to say, I was really impressed with Rob Shaw, and I think he really solidified his captaincy by showing that that hey i'm not going to deal with anything and kudos on that one but let's get into the match i mean wales struck first obviously off johnny may penalty and that i think johnny may didn't play that well um during the game but wales looked like they started out a pretty commanding lead to begin they did, with they did um haskell had a little bit of a missed tackle and yeah but see that that comes even it's in not the even a missed tackle yeah. but it was kind of high and for his experience i expect better so yeah. thankfully for him, he had a better second half. It was a great run by Palatel, honestly. But yeah, Haskell, bring it down, and that's why I think we'll come to see Haskell. He played, he played a really good second half. I felt like he played a pretty sloppy first half, though. But that's okay, you know. James Haskell, he's big. He plays for Wasp. We love him, anyways. Um, my big thing first half was George North when he came off with concussion-like symptoms, and they let him go back on. And I know we've talked about this a little bit, but. If you're concussed, man, stay out. No game's worth it, dude. Well, this is what I'm going to. I, my argument is it wasn't a concussion. Yeah, well, it could have been something else. True. And they brought him into that because under the rules, concussions are what they allow them to come off the pitch for to get checked on. Yeah, so some dog. And second half, he actually had a kind of a similar knock to the head. And you could tell, instant replay, something's up with this dude's head. And for someone to not see that, I question that. And we got to do better at concussions than that one, so... Clearly, it didn't yeah. change the outcome of the game. But let's look at the second try by England, though. Pretty impressed. Uh, for Luther and Anthony being the first cap in this one, 
that try was pretty darn epic. I, I, I agree. I agree. I think that Watson had an easy pickup. So let's give the try to Mike Brown then. I agree. Yeah, Mike Brown, you get that try for us. Watson, great job. But hey, yeah. you you need, you were where you needed to be. Exactly. So yeah. and you read the play as it was going. So it's a, it's a joint effort. I can't just give it to one of you. So they kept they kept it close and. Dan Biggers, drop goal. Uh, England, you got to press up on that one. That seemed a little silly to me to allow that much space for them to take it. But it is what it is. But let's look at some of the numbers. If I look at passes, total passes, it was 121 passes for Wales, 118 passes for England. Not that many if we look at the rest of things. Right, but more importantly, what I found interesting, that yeah. the balls won in the op opponent's 22 yep. was 5 to Wales and 34 to England. That, Clearly. And I actually, when you winning. told me that stat... I thought I was drunk, and I clearly wasn't, so I, you showed me again. And lo and behold, folks, it was not a typo. That's correct. So that coupled with, she pointed out an even better stat for me, possession-wise for England, they had 50% possession in the first half, 48% possession in the second half. But of that percentage time in opponent's half, it was 51% in the first half, then it jumped to 58% in the second half. So you had less possession, more of it was in your opponent's half. That's why England wins and was pressuring in that one. That's why it was a comeback. Let's be honest, Wales really tanked after the 60th. And I don't think they were phenomenal in the first. No, I don't think England was. Although you called them on. your winners. Yeah, well, that's, you know. <laughs> hey, we will talk about that later, but right now, that's that's Okay. Errors, everything. For the most part, I actually believed it was a very good game. What the but newspapers have said about George Ford, how awesome that kick was, don't get me wrong, completely awesome. If you watch the highlights again, what was even more awesome is what how he kicked it, right? Yes, yes. His skill level at such a young career-wise was he kept his head down. Oh, Replay all, it all the, the way, whole time. All the way until the ball almost hits... The what top looks of the like post vertical, area. yeah, top of the post. And for someone who's battling the great Owen Farrell, came after the footsteps of Johnny Wilkinson, to be able to do that technique is unbelievable. And I haven't heard anyone talk about it, but we we broke it down slow-mo. Watched a few times. Awesome to see on that one. So, yeah, England, good job. Um, England, excellent job. Like I said, you were going to come out on top and buy a try if you go back okay. and listen to our first uh, podcast. <laughs> I knew I you were going to bring that up. I knew it. I did not only I call the it. winner, I called it by That's a try. That's why from now on we're going to start deleting our podcast from the week before so I am never proved wrong. But yeah, from 16-8, being down at half to 21-16 in Cardiff, you got to give it to England on that one. Hands down to you guys on that. Um, it wasn't given. It was well-deserved and taken. They took it. Oh, by far on that one. And Mike Brown, keep it up, man. You're playing a so great football. Now you can spot. wear your English jersey all over again. Yep, I, I definitely can. So good job, guys. Let's, let's move on to See, the lackluster of the matches real quick because we have to because we care. Um, Italy, Ireland. Boring. In Rome. Yeah, more ball. I think what was more shocking for me is since I slept through the first half and then woke up at halftime and it's only 9-3 to Ireland. Yeah. And immediately you freak out that maybe Sergio Aparici is doing something. <laughs> But you come to but realize, you know even that if you look at their really. stats, though, a lot of them were pretty equal in sense. Like, in, yeah. they were equal in tackles completed. True, they were e pretty fair in like possession overall. Well, this this game passes. out of the three had the most passes, where Ireland had one ninety two, Italy had one forty four. So play. Still, I don't understand how you can't score more if you're passing that much, but that just shows how rusty we are in this and one. And our hottie to be, Tommy yeah, O'Donnell. Good job, Tommy. Way to go. We talk uh, about you and you blow up the winners. fame. I know. What did that, I say? Uh, yeah, I, I did say. Yet again, I said Ireland was winning. That's true. Now, Italy had the most tackles out of the whole. I was surprised at tournament. that. I yeah. was surprised. That's surprising. What it happens was also when you play a sloppy game, game for Ireland. I don't think oh, this completely. is the game that mattered to them. I no. mean, obviously they needed the win, but I don't think it, they – Worked hard for it. If it wasn't for Murray and O'Donnell scoring, it would have been a lot less. Um, Rob Kearney, I didn't think, did the best job as I've seen him do. Ian Keatley, at least you Basically, Ireland didn't penalties. play for me this week. No. So I'll see what happens But I will say this about Italy. I think they finally found a number 10 in Kelly Haimona. Yes, 
I said Hymona. He probably isn't from Rome, but <laughs> he wears the jersey, so we'll give him that for Italy. Um, pre seat, yeah. I, I'm, we'll see. Yeah, I'm not convinced we'll see. on that. But one, Ireland, but... we'll see you next week because it's like you didn't play this week. Yeah, good luck on that one. Now let's move to the best match of them all because you know where my allegiance always lies. Let's go to France, Scotland, playing in Paris. This is awesome, and I mean, it's been a while since we saw this kit. Right? I will say, I will say, it was actually excellent to see a little, a little red in France. Yeah, but ironically, they're weird. getting reamed for not having anything French on their jersey except a cock. That's see, it. <laughs> see, I took it as it was a compliment. You're just showing the Scottish flag and then your emblem. But apparently, everyone has a problem with no French flag apparel being well, it on is there anywhere. Six nations, so yeah, I would assume I, you wear I your would hope nation. You would know. On well, yeah, they just wanted oh, to be honorable. Let's get to the Scotland. details of the match. Yeah, good. Uh, well, no, I actually can't say good from France because France did nothing. Scotland handed them the game. Well, they, with that number of penalties that they conceded, yes, it was ridiculous. But more importantly, like you were talking about. Where were these penalties conceded at? Second and third penalty that Camille Lopez took were dead middle of the post. One inside the 22, one barely on the outside of the 22. Scotland, stop being a bunch of buffoons and giving silly penalties away. Especially you experienced players. You have no excuse. Johnny Beatty, you're a great player, but bro, stop bringing down balls. You know what you're doing in that one. You look silly. And how about our childish player from Scotland? See, and this is what frustrates me. Scotland, I didn't even know how to celebrate because they finally scored a try. <laughs> so that in itself is we're a thrilled. And, well, I should step back. And Tommy Seymour, hope you get better. Do you fight? That was great. You came on. Good hands out wide. Great, Greg Laidlaw sold the run on the inside. Stop being a child. Who does yeah. that? Who throws the ball out knowing you're not supposed yeah, to? Yeah, don't do that, honestly. That's it. Anyone who's listening who's never played... Just give the ball to the ref, and even if you're trying, I understood. I understand. It wasn't even a moment for you to be so pissed off. It's not like we were at the last few minutes, and you know this is. It wasn't at that point yet. You what gave a them a penalty, you which did. converted into points, more points that uh, that Frank well, if, didn't need. If you wouldn't have given them that, it was still nine eight. So you let them go up to twelve eight and get a give a bigger barrier between yourself. I understand he didn't want to allow a quick throw in, but still, get there's get, other ways to avoid a quick throw in. Yeah, roll the ball, do something, but you, you did. You, you looks, blatantly yeah. threw it, and it was obvious. And what's weird is you have Girl such up. a cool name, too. So I love that name, Doogie Kudos Fine. on your try, and now you're yeah. going to be remembered as the guy that caused that, conceded that penalty. But thank oh, you. By far, uh, what we watched 11 this... penalties conceded, side yeah, note. Guys, that's a lot 11. of penalties. That's, you can't... Uh... And you can tell by the score. Lopez, regardless of his boot being on... You can't win games like that. It's going to be on yeah, when it, it's that when you, they set it up for you. Well, when they put it in and favoring his boot, I get it. What I thought was pretty cool to see the seventy first minute, Tim Visser tried to steal a pretty lazy lop sided pass to Yohan Uje. The even worse part, though, I found from this was if he would not. Ah, I, I'm just I'm I'm getting angry here, and you know it. If Bennett wouldn't have stopped that, there it would have looked really silly. But I applaud Tim Visser for going for the steal. Then again, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I just get angry about this. You know, I've had this game is the rough I've one had for a, me. And I've I'm had not, a tough you one. know, I've you're the bigger Scotland time. supporter than I am. But I, my point um, being, they gave it to them. They did. And, you know, the Gray brothers, I was expecting so much more. I didn't see it from them. Not, not this game. No. Not and, this and game. And usually the Scotland pack has a pretty good back row. I didn't see it this time. I mean, I really they didn't, didn't. If you look at all the stats, though, didn't they, they didn't either. lose. They didn't lose any scrums per se. They didn't. You know, they had. But look at the look at the total meters in this one. France had 418 meters. Scotland had 389 meters. Guys, that's the most meters run out of all the teams. But yet we played such a sloppy game, and that probably goes to show the talent there. We just need to get better. Need to get. Better execution needs to happen, clearly. Better go back to the basics. Learn the rules. Yeah. You know when to roll away. You know when not to reach. You know when not to throw the ball. These are basic, basic penalties that they got. Scotland had 51% possession in the first, then went down to 40% possession. And in the second half of that 40%, only 33% was in the opponent's half. So just because you get a try, Scotland, let's not forget how to do yeah. everything else. Put a second try. Let's go. But this did show 15 to 8. If you would have had a, just a little more execution there, you might have won. 
So I don't, I don't think France can hold themselves up high. Once again, I don't think this was France's phenomenal game. I mean, so we this was kicking practice for Lopez. True. That's what it was. Yeah. That, so moving forward, Scotland, good result, but we'll see. And this goes Scotland, out thank to... Scotland, you for me right yet again. This is two. Two. Well, we two have at, at Danny Yankis Twittered us saying, Vince, would you mind redoing your prediction over France? Well, at Danny Yankis, I still think France will come out on the bottom because what I saw was pretty bad in this one. This I knew you were going to go with this. So This is why I'm hot. Yeah. I'm okay. hot because I'm right. Well, You're we're right. going You're with the hotness hot. now here because if you remember our predictions, Raquel is up 3-1. to one, And I will say she accurately predicted that a single try would differentiate Wales and England. So I've learned I'm going to stop using my emotions Here's his excuse voting. for getting served by yeah, his wife no, I on didn't predictions just get on served. Six Nations. I didn't, I didn't just serve him. Yeah, no, I spoon-fed him yeah, as well you, because you, I just you, detailed it. And he laughed at me You spanked was me wrong. on the way down. And it was pretty embarrassing so, because I usually know a lot about rugby. But for some reason, I chose to pick the underdogs here. And underdogs? Yeah. Really? Since when do people consider Wales an underdog? Uh, most of history, European history. I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah, I know. Now you know that you're an idiot because you should have known better. I know. uh, So so, let's go into this coming week. Okay. Yeah, first match then. England, Italy. I say England. (laughs) (laughs) The one week I'd probably take it safe, Italy's going to go on a romp. But since they're playing at Twickenham, you have to say England. But I, I would hope you would agree with me on this one. It can't just be a win. England needs to dominate this game. If they well, want to win the to, Six they Nations. They should. <laughs> yeah, they should. But this needs to be a 60-3 to three type of game. Well, the way I see the Six Nations coming, they're going to need the point differential. Yeah. They and, need the And I imagine, I imagine Watson and Rell get starting again. So I think this is their other option, other chance to score some more tries, get some experience under their belt. Yeah, it's got to be England, and I'll be All right. proud of that one with So we you. got France-Ireland? Yeah, God. I go Ireland. See, and because of the World Cup in 2011, this is where we're going to differentiate ourselves. I'm going to say France is going to go up there. You read on that and cock and see where it takes I'm you. going to. I'm going to. My boys of the other red, white, and blue are going to go up there and get the win. Now, I'm not going to say by how much because I'm not that comfortable with it. He's not, but I will. Yes. Okay. You're with Ireland. I'm with uh, France. Yes, that could I, be the I am with Ireland, and oh I think my. it'll be by a penalty. Ooh. Whoa. That would be crazy. I'm going to say by a try, so that way we can have okay. banter later. The way we saw these two teams kicking, I think it'll be by a penalty. Okay. That's bad. All right. Look. Scotland, Wales. Uh, Wales. Uh, See, why do you got to do that? They're playing at Murrayfield. Just let them win. I mean, although Murrayfield is beautiful because we is have great. visited. Beautiful it is stadium. beautiful. And good atmosphere, but, good vibes. Um, yeah, Wales has something to prove. They, they just do. Got, they just got... They have bigger backs, I'll tell you that. But then again, it's not... It, just because you're big doesn't mean you're going to run over them. Uh, you're going to go with Wales? Uh, Wales. Uh, of course, since Scotland is playing at home, I have to go with Scotland regardless of what But you I are think. wearing their shirt right I now, am so I would hope. Sir, I know. I look good in it, too, so it makes it even better. Yeah, I'm going to go by Scotland, but I'm going to go by this one by... I'm going to say this goes down to the wire penalty. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I don't like uh, that. At least a try. Okay. Wales. Wow. All right. Well, that's what... So, so I just would like to... Before we move on any further, I would just like to make notice that I have not used awesome, epic, outstanding, brilliant, or amazing more than twice. And now he said them again, so three times. Yeah, pretty good. I just wanted to lay claim there. I'm, I'm working let's on my Let's move style. on. Let's move yeah. on. He's just about to move on to the fact that I'm winning right yeah, now. No, winning, okay. winning, winning, winning. And winning. the winner gets hashtag something. Hashtag winning. Yeah, hashtag, hashtag winning. Hashtag wife winning. But this hashtag is where our I'm fans can actually come in to help us on this one, I believe. Who wants to jump on what team? Team wife. Yeah, we'll go with Team Raquel and Team Vince. Yeah, Team Raquel so and Team Vince. So just Twitter us, Instagram us, whatever, on which team you want to be because the winner – is going to get something to be decided to be decided we were originally going to do you had to do new calendar shoots with the ball over your junk but my wife pointed out to me that i want that so that's not really a loss i would purposely try that's going to happen anyway so it's so. going to happen anyways we know that um but yeah stay tuned because i have a mountain to climb out of on this one not even just the fact that i'm losing i'm losing to my wife which has massive repercussions later down the road. So it's All right, gonna be a let's good get to what we want to go do next. Yeah, let's go. We're going to be in Vegas for the Sevens, for the USA Sevens. It's the stop 
over for HSBC World Series. It's going to be a pretty good one. I mean, is if you it look going at... to be epic? <laughs> this is the one time we use it. It's going to be epically amazing. And <laughs> you look at it. Finally, New Zealand is not on top for something. South Africa at seventy six. New Zealand 69, Fiji 64, Australia 58 points. So there's your top four that would automatically qualify for the Olympics. Right. Then Who's how right do you below? look on below? I mean, I mean, England's there. There you're two points behind at 56, Argentina 47, Scotland 42, USA 36. I'm sorry, USA is not that far from Scotland. No, they, but the Wellington, um, Scotland had a really good run, and so did the U.S. I top know. of the pool. So this should be interesting. I mean, if we look at it, look at the pool breakdowns. I think uh, the great thing about this series um, here for us is going to be that this is a great preview for the Olympics. And I think that's what they're oh, using as a definite tester for a lot of the other things. By far. I've been I've been happy with watching the Sevens this year. I think you're getting a mix of players, so it's really enjoyable to see. Um, I would imagine New Zealand's probably going to make it through. I think England's going to make it through. Um I'm just going to have to say South Africa, and, and I'm going to say Scotland's going to move, again, to the cup quarterfinals. I mean, who do you regardless... Think's, uh, who do you think's going to ultimately win it, though? The whole series? No, this particular stop. Hmm. I don't know. I don't feel, I don't feel yet for it. South Africa, South Africa about has about dominated it. four or five. Um, they always have a good showing, though. They have a great showing, and they're just pretty cool people. Um, I'm going to go with, because everyone knows I care... I'm going to go to Scotland. Why not? Well, I'm not going to go to New Zealand because there's too many people for that. You're not a DJ Forbes fan? No. What's up with I'm, that? Not that I'm, not, I'm not his fan. I'm okay. just not a fan of the All Blacks. Yeah. Sorry. I think, I think it just makes me sad because they're so in shape and I'm so not. It just gets so <laughs> upsetting to see, you know, like 0% body fat and they're well, not even Well, I'm going to have to go for this one. Let's, let's hope the Fijians take it out. You want the Fijians? Yeah, you know what? I feel like they just you do just so like Their, their fans hair. are so you great. You just like their hair. Their fans, by far, at this tournament is like my favorite thing to see. Yeah, you except, have these like 60 when... plus year old ladies with their flags and wigs. Yeah. And you know what? To you. To you, they I dedicate so this so hard they don't even know which way their flag really goes. I know. And they just wave it anyways. And it's it's pretty cool to see everyone becomes Fijian. But yeah, sevens we'll will be see. good. I mean, I always want the Eagles, my boys in red, white, and blue, to do, do well. well USA hey, all the way for me. We got a couple good shows coming up. We got an interview with the president of the Afghanistan Rugby Union, which will be showing next week. We got some more review for Six Nations, and we'll have some a little. Can't even. I shouldn't break the bubble on other interviews we have going. Should you know, I just come back yeah. and listen to us, and make sure you subscribe to the Past Rugby News. Don't forget and visit us sure. on Twitter and Instagram at Past Rugby News. Yeah, tag us, send us messages, let us know what you're thinking, what you want to hear more of, who you want to hear less of. Yeah, well, see, now that's not fair because then <laughs> everyone's going to write into X me, and they're going to put another female on here, and I'm going to be done. Well, so don't do I that. don't think they want to lose Hashtag you. There always has Vince. to be a loser here, so Team Raquel all the way. That's that's really good. Thanks again for stopping by and listening to us. We appreciate you. Enjoy the music closing as we get on with Don't this. worry, there will be variety sooner or later. That's debatable. Have a good week. Bye.